Hello there guys, hello there guys, welcome back to Unis Talks Football, welcome back to a brand new video. I hope all of you are doing well today. I've waited and I've waited and I've waited and we can't, we can't wait any longer. If anything happens after this, it happens, but I've got something to say about Liverpool. I've got a nah, just, we'll get to it, we'll get to it, but before we do... I hope all of you are doing well. We are going to get cracking on video number two out of two. I did video number one earlier on today. If you want to catch it, you can head right there and check it out. If you do want to pause this and watch that, then great. If you are weird and lopsided, like I always say, you want to do it the other way around, then whatever floats your boat, you do you. You can watch this and then go to that later. As you please. Now, we are going to get cracking with Liverpool, but I always do let you know that the updates can come at any time. And if the updates are going to come at any time, and for example, if something happens later tonight, right, you never know. You might get another video. You might just, or you might be getting a live stream or whatever. So to be notified, you have to do one thing, which is make sure you hit the subscribe button and then do another thing, which is hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. On top of that, make sure you keep up to date on all things Unis Talks Football, as well as myself personally, my personal socials and my Unis Talks Football socials are in the description down below, as well as on screen for you guys right now. Make sure you follow on all of those and enjoy. Um, especially on X, no longer called Twitter, is it? We've got to start calling it X, I'm not used to it, but X um, is where I give my minute-by-minute -minute opinions as they do come in immediately, so um, check it out. Now, before we get into this whole thing, I do want to say, yesterday was my birthday, and you guys all started sending flooded messages, tons of comments, all of that. I just want to say a huge thank you. Um, I read quite a lot of them. Um, probably not all of them, but a lot of them. I'm just scrolling and scrolling and seeing, and it was just flooded with all of your comments love and support so much appreciated thank you all so much honestly from myself to you guys thank you all for the well wishes had a good birthday and uh one of them was this uh, yeah we are potch potch listen that on the phone yeah on the phone you need an assistant i'm right here i'm, I'm kitted out i'm ready to go <laughs> I'm ready to go. All, I've, all i've got to do is leave home and come to come to gobham done I, I'm, I'm ready just cool just cool i'm here now we're gonna get uh cracking into what's ready and what's ready is my roasting for liverpool yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Why? Because I'll show you in a sec. Now, let's get cracking in terms of the news, how it's all gone down, and it's still coming in now. As I said, things can come in right now, minute by minute. Actually, talk about minute by minute. I think it's only right that I actually set up the latest as it's coming in right in front of me, just in case, because you never know. You never know. Well, actually, talking about just in case, Harry Kane to Bayern Munich is now on, which is great. We'll get to him in the end. But let's start off with what Melissa Reddy of Sky Sports had to say earlier on about, what, a couple of hours ago? Here it is. Moises Caicedo emptied his locker out five days ago and hasn't returned to Brighton since. He's currently in London waiting for something to happen. Then we had Fabrizio come out with Moises Caicedo in London, waiting for key developments on his future. Brighton waiting for Liverpool to send their official bid. If not tonight, it has to be Friday. Liverpool will 100% bid. Then it will be also up to Chelsea. Highest bidder will get Brighton's green light. Then we had the secret scout come out with something pretty important, aligning the views. True, Moises Caicedo is in London. His agent has been in West London today, awaiting Chelsea and Brighton to reach an agreement. Liverpool ready to smash their record. Should know more in the next few hours which direction he is going. So that's going to be key. This is why I'm saying anything can happen right now. Literally anything can happen. It's a case of... Um, in the next few minutes, in the next hour, in the next three hours, whatever, it might all start. It might, all, it might, it might all happen. It might, it might just. So, we'll have to keep our tabs on this as it's going on and um, see exactly what's going to happen. Um, but let's get into it more because we've now heard that he is in London. He's waiting. Him and his agent are waiting. They're doing the Peter Odomwengi tactic. You know, like Peter Odomwengi ended up what was it in QPR's car park, waiting for the deal to go through, and then it never did, and he had to drive off. <laughs> <laughs> Poor lad. But he's basically doing that in London. Where in London is he? I don't know. It's like try and go and find him. Uh, uh, you know what? After this, I might go to like try and find Caicedo. You know, I go on the Caicedo hunt all around central London. Moises, Moises, where are you, mate? Where are you? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, let's keep reading. Fabrizio goes into more. 
Liverpool's bid will be tonight or Friday and is expected to be bigger than the £80 million from Chelsea days ago. Chelsea remain on it with the possibility to improve that proposal if they want to. Brighton will pick highest bidder but then up to the player to decide. Brighton won it over in 24 hours and Chelsea keep their dream to unveil Caicedo as new player on Sunday. <sighs> This is, this is getting intense. This is getting intense. Um, and this is where we have to now analyse the situation. And this is where I'm going to come in and flipping grill Liverpool. Yeah? Why? Because, look, we were having a nice poker game. Yeah? It was a nice poker match happening. And everything was on the brink, right? We were talking about body language. We were talking about last-minute bluffs. We were talking about we've got four aces. We've got, we're doing all of that. Us and Brighton are having this nice, nice game. We're taking our time with it. It's tense. We're looking each other in the eye. We're not trying to give too much away. It's all going as both expect it to go. And you know when you're in a poker game, sometimes one drunk idiot can walk in the room. Yeah? This is what's happened. We've got one drunk idiot, Liverpool, that have come in and go, Oh, you guys are pretend this is something else. You guys are playing. What have, what have you got? Ah, oh, and then smack knocks the cards out of the hand. Smack knocks the, knocks the cards out of the hand. All the, 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 the earnings are on the table. He swipes them off the table. He's like, oh, I don't like poker. And he walks off. That, that's Liverpool. He's like, I want to play. I want to play. Yeah? I want to play. But you're not letting me play. <laughs> that is Liverpool. Why do you come in and wreck everything? Liverpool have come in and absolutely destroyed everything that we had set on, on, on getting this player. For a certain fee, just under 100 mil would have been nice. But now, now, now we've we, now we got to go all the way, haven't we? We actually have to go all the way now. And this is where, look, this is where Brighton get the leverage and fair play. Brighton are in the perfect position right now. Brighton are looking at this and going, last minute saver, Liverpool, fantastic, yeah? Absolutely incredible because, like, now we're talking about what the bid has to be. Well, Matt Law gets into it and he sums it up. He sums it up. Here it is. Chelsea are likely to table a new bid of around 90 million plus 10 million in add-ons. It is understood... Now, Liverpool could have quite the battle trying to convince Caicedo. Now, we'll get into that in a little bit why. But this is why I'm saying, Liverpool, why did you get involved? Why? Why? What was the point? And I'll explain why it's absolutely useless that Liverpool try and get involved. I'll get to that in a bit. But 90 plus 10, initially, before Liverpool got involved, I would have been like, no, you know what? Because Brighton are making it really difficult. Let's just go along with that. And I think it, 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 should, it will get accepted. Now... With Liverpool in the question, I have to I have to be honest. We were to put 90 plus 10. Liverpool come in and go, here's 95 plus 5. Well, they got the advantage. This is why I'm like, why the flip? Why are you getting involved? Why are you getting involved? <laughs> what? Now, the one thing that helps us is the player. This is where I think we have the leverage. It's Caicedo. Caicedo wants Chelsea. He doesn't want anyone else. He wants Chelsea. That's that's public. Everyone and their mother knows that. He wants Chelsea. So that's where Liverpool. This is why I'm saying, why did you get involved? Why are you here, brother? Why? Well, let's get into the reasoning and exactly why I feel the way that I'm saying. Because it's obvious, Liverpool, it, your chance was already low. Here's why. So we've got, it's understood Liverpool could have quite a battle trying to convince Caicedo. Liverpool's hopes of landing Caicedo now rest on the player having a change of heart. And from Ben Jacobs... Situation with Moises Caicedo remains very fast moving. Caicedo, who is in London, Brighton, plus Chelsea and Liverpool want the situation fully resolved by Friday. 48 hour deadline or sooner was set this morning. It's obvious, absolutely obvious that now Liverpool don't stand a chance unless Caicedo somehow goes, no, you know what? I feel like Liverpool, which is not going to happen. <laughs> It's just not, he's in London, he's here, he's waiting for the deal to go through, that's how much he wants to move, he's already made it public, He stopped training, he stopped playing, he's taken his belongings, as Melissa Reddy's already said, he's left Brighton, he's probably already said his goodbyes, he's gone. Liverpool come in for no reason, as I said, they're like that drunk guy that's just come in and destroyed everything for no reason whatsoever, you know? Now, I just hope... I'm not really hope. I'm quite confident, thank goodness because of Caicedo, that if we do put in the 90 plus 10 bid, it will get accepted. They'll get the 100 mil, Caicedo gets his move, it'll all be lush. Fantastic. Liverpool are waiting 
now, just in case. The only possibility is just in case. Imagine if Brighton somehow refuse our offer. And then all of a sudden, Chelsea's like, no, you know what, this isn't happening. Something like that happens, Liverpool come sweeping in. That's what Liverpool are waiting for. We have the opportunity to just kill it now. We're at a point where we've negotiated for long enough. That's just kill it now. 90 plus 10, put it in. Screw it. Put it in. Put it in and get this done. Now, as I said, personally, this whole Liverpool situation has kind of put my theory in the mud, if I'm being completely honest. I was thinking the deal's already done and whatnot. And to an extent, I think negotiations have gone pretty well in that direction. But Liverpool coming in and causing this, this, this entire madness has kind of allowed things to just be sped up. Now it has to be quick. But what I hope and what Chelsea should aim for now is this. Get this Caicedo deal done. Get him to the bridge for Sunday. I don't care if he doesn't play. Get him to the bridge for Sunday. I need him there. I need him at that Chelsea-Liverpool game. I need him, right, to be an official Chelsea player that cannot play because he wasn't registered in time, but I need him to be a Chelsea player and I need the announcement to be done just before the kickoff in front of all their fans and our fans and for everyone to go, ha, we got him and not you. Don't try and play games with us next time. <laughs> Simple as that. Do not try and attempt to play these games with us. So that's what I want on Sunday. Chelsea, make it happen. It would be fantastic if we could just do that in front of the, in front of the Liverpool crowd. How nice would that be? Lovely jubbly. And in front of the Liverpool officials. Not really the crowd, the crowd of the crowd. I don't think even the Liverpool fans are expecting much from this. They know. But the Liverpool hierarchy, them lot that are going to be there, the officials, yeah? In front of them. Don't play these games next time. <laughs> so, anyway. That's the latest on, um, on Kaiseido. And look, that's the latest. More can happen later tonight. We'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. But let's move to... Um, actually... Tell a lie. I thought I was done. Matt Law actually had more. Here it is. Liverpool have been interested in Kai Taylor for months, but it appears they have made their move too late to convince him of their project. There we are. That's my point. Basically, that's my point. There was no need for you to come into this poker game. Why, why get involved? Why, 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 why wreck the table? Why, why swipe everything off? Why destroy the vibe? The vibe? You destroy the mood. What's the point? Why? Why? Why Liverpool? Why? Anyway, that's Liverpool. That's what's happened. Let me know your thoughts down below. But what I want to say to everyone that's panicking. Calma. Calma, calma. all I have to say. <laughs> Can I say though? Now, um, we've got news on Harry Kane. Let's get into it before we get into another big portion of this video, which you've seen in the title, so you know what's coming. Here it is. Harry Kane is hesitating signing for Bayern Munich now because he knows he'll receive a big signing bonus next summer if he joins a club on a free. That came from Le Keep earlier tonight not too long ago actually that was about what half an hour ago but then minutes ago whilst recording we had this happen here it is florian plettenberg says breaking exclusive news kane got the info that his move to bayern is looking more likely now as reported bayern bosses tottenham and kane's management were in very good and respectful negotiations today and tonight now the deal is on the verge to be sealed as kane wants to join bayern Fair enough. And look, I was about to say, because if there was going to be a situation where um, where that Harry Kane is hesitating and thinking, I'm not going to go yet because next year I'm going to get a signing on fee and whatnot. OK, then forget trophies. Go to Saudi. Simple as that. But if he's actually going to buy Munich, if this is going to go through, I think we'll get more in terms of what's happening later tomorrow, possibly. Um, and we'll see exactly how that's going to be unveiled. But... Harry Kane, I think, will end up joining Bayern Munich. I think it's basically done. I think it's a matter of time. Let's see what happens. Let me know your thoughts down below. Harry Kane to Bayern Munich. Um, and do you think he's actually going to go through? Do you think he does actually want it as it's being reported now? Or do you think he's going to wait? Let me know down below. Because if he does wait, then, yeah, he leaves on a free. But at the same time, who's going to come in? Who's going to be interested? One year older as well. Are you going to get the primary cane? Are you not? There's, there's, there's a whole factor of things. But he does get his signing on bonus. As I said, if that's going to be the motivation, if it's if it's mo if it's money that's mo the motivation, go to Saudi. Simple as that. Go to Saudi. Now, 
Let me know your thoughts down below. Let's get to a segment of this video that I had to include in one of the two normal videos that I do. I wanted to do this separately, but it's just going to oversaturate. It's going to be impossible. There's too much happening. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to stick it in. So what we're going to do, we're going to give you my Premier League predictions. This is going to be the second half of this video now. My Premier League predictions, how I think the Premier League table is going to look like by the final day. Let's get into it. This is going to be wrong, just to let you know. We all get it wrong all the time. All of us, all football YouTubers, we come on, we give you our Premier League predictions, we all get it wrong. <laughs> no one gets it right. So we're going to have some fun, right? About, I'm going to be realistic. I'm trying to be as realistic and honest as possible. So let's get into it. You'll see the table start to appear right here. Starting off in last place, I think it's going to be Sheffield United. Sheffield United and the whole relegation, if we get into the whole relegation, we have Luton and we have Nottingham Forest. That, I believe, are the bottom three. I think Sheffield United don't have the facilities to stay up. I think they're going to be the ones that stay bottom and quite considerably. Some are going to say, no, that should be Luton. Luton, Luton signed Ross Barkley the other day. I mean, welcome back, Ross Barkley. How was your time over in Nice? I hope you got a 10. Um, but, <laughs> you know, Luton Town, Luton, in terms of their spending that I've seen, they've actually moved quite a bit. They won that playoff, so it means they've got quite a nice budget that they get to play with, and they are using it considerably. Sheffield United, no. Sheffield United, I, I'm looking at their movement, and, and it just doesn't look significant enough, and I do think, I do think the quality is going to be... Massive difference. So I'm going with those two to finish 19th and 20th. When I look at all the other teams, I don't see anyone else getting relegated. I know some people are saying Everton, but no, I think Sean Dice is going to have them solid. I think they'll... You'll see where I put them, but not 18th. But when I look at everyone else in and around that margin, I think West Ham will end up climbing the table. I think, you know, anyone else that is in and around there are not going to get relegated, but Nottingham Forest were not far off last season. And they did survive by a little margin. I think this time they might go down. Um, so I'm going Nottingham Forest, Luton and Sheffield United as the bottom three. Now, I know normally we can go through, you know, 15, 14, 13, 12. Let's not. <laughs> Let's not. Let's go up to 10th, right? This is from 10th all the way down to the bottom. I've gone with Bournemouth in 17th that just survived. Um, Everton in 16th. They, I think, will... Being around that margin, they might even finish above 16th, if I'm being honest. Wolves in 15th, Burnley in 14th, Crystal Palace in 13th. Uh, those, are our team, those are the teams that are all going to finish there, let's be honest. They are all going to finish there. Burnley, though, I don't think are going to go down. Burnley under Vincent Company, I think it, they did, as Guardiola said earlier today, they destroyed the championship. And it's true, the level that they're at right now doesn't seem like a team that's just come from the championship. It looks like a team that's already mid-table in the Premier League. And that's where I think they're going to finish. They're going to do what Leeds done initially when they got promoted under Bielsa. I think they're going to be that team that tries to finish 11th, 12th. Somewhere there, nowhere near relegation. I think Burnley will be that. And Burnley, I think, will begin to see climb. So I put them in 14th, Crystal Palace 13th, Fulham in 12th, which might be undermining them a bit, but I think the quality from the other teams is what's going to supersede them. So I've put them in 12th. West Ham in 11th, big improvement from last season. I do think they'll find their feet a little bit. Looking at themselves getting Harry Maguire and then all that. Yeah, we'll see how we'll see how that goes. But <laughs> West Ham um, might be getting considerable money for Paqueta. They refused an £88 million bid from Man City for Paqueta. Are they mad? West Ham, for that, I have to say you're crazy. <laughs> what do you want? 100 Come on, don't be... No, 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 no. Everyone needs to stop trying to do what Brighton are doing. And everyone... And Brighton needs to stop trying to play the big boy. All these guys need to stop. Calm yourselves down. Humble yourselves. <laughs> Relax. So, West Ham in 11th. And I've put Brentford in 10th. Now, I've put Brentford in 10th. Why? Because if we go up to 8th... I had to. <laughs> I had to put Spurs in 9th. And I'll explain why. Brighton are better than them. Aston Villa, better than them. Um, the rest of us, better than them. Newcastle, better than them. So therefore, Tottenham will finish ninth. <laughs> it's by default that they finish ninth, especially if they let go of Harry Kane. They let go of Harry Kane and don't get a replacement in and have to rely on Richarlison, and they've got that Tottenham team that they have already, despite Angie Postacoglu looking like he's getting a very good way of playing football, starting to go at Tottenham. But that's not going to be enough because it's Tottenham. <laughs> Tottenham the mentality has been there for years Tottenham just let results go that is what they do and that is why without a prolific goal scorer like a Harry Kane who still bangs in 30 goals a season despite finishing in 8th or 7th or whatever it was is going to go that's the only 
thing that they've been holding on to. Harry Kane, please save us. You take that out of the equation. They are finished. So I've put them in ninth. <laughs> I've put them in ninth. Brighton, I think, will do well. I don't think they'll do as well, considering they, they've let go of... They, well, they're going to let go of Kaiseido. They've let go of McAllister. Uh, you know, there's 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 players that they, they do replace them with very, very nicely. And, and CISO, for example, who's playing very, very well. They just pluck out talents. Brighton just do that. But for that reason, they'll always stay in that bracket. Seventh, eighth, they won't go higher. So I'm going with Brighton in eighth, respectfully. They might do better. I've gone in Aston Villa in seventh. Aston Villa 7th, they've been doing absolutely wonderful in terms of the rebuild that they've had under Unai Emery. Some of the signings that they're getting through, they are serious, they're solid, they're hard to get past. I think Aston Villa are going to make that move to try and get a Europa League spot. Um, Aston Villa are playing Conference League this year as well, so that's something to bear in mind. But I do reckon that they will fight for a Europa League spot. However, the teams above them I just think are better. It's very, very hard to break into what is now the top six. And the top six is, I'm sorry Tottenham, you've been kicked out. <laughs> you've been kicked out, why? Because Newcastle are now the top six. And I've put them in six. I know they finished third last season, didn't they? They finished fourth, third, third. Um, I think the competition is going to be a lot more severe this time, a lot more fierce. And that's why with Newcastle not really moving in the transfer market like I expected them to. Yes, they bought Tonali. You know, yes, they're making those adjustments slowly but surely. But that's why I've put them in sixth, because I think the other teams are doing bigger things right now. Newcastle in two to three years, I believe, could be a team that's fighting for the title. But right now... I think sixth is probably a fair adjustment as to where they're going to be. So I've put them in sixth. We go into the top five now. This is where it begins to get tasty. Who have I put in fifth? In fifth, I've got Liverpool. I've put Liverpool in fifth because they've got no defence. They're going to lead goals. Klopp doesn't look stable. The whole team doesn't look stable. It doesn't feel stable. When you look at Liverpool fans, they look all over the place. They look like they're panicking. Now, bearing in mind the transfer window is still open, and this is why I think a lot of us get these wrong, because the, the transfer window shuts on, what, August 31st or September? September first week of September? I think it's somewhere there. Um, there's still time. Liverpool could just wake up like they're trying to now and get Caicedo. They could just wake up and go, okay, screw it. Get that player and get that player. Get that player. FSG might be like, okay, screw it. We're going to get the money out. Here you go. They might just do that. But I don't see it. <laughs> I don't see it. And defensively, they are exposed. And this is why on Sunday, I'm pretty optimistic. And you'll be getting that match preview for Chelsea Liverpool on Saturday. So make sure you guys are going to be here for that. Um, but... I do honestly believe, because of that, Liverpool will leak in goals, and that's why they're going to finish below everyone that I've put above them. Because they're just not going to be a solid. They'll score, but they'll leak. And that's where I think their, their, their negative point comes in. The instability might creep in, and they might just let go of some results because of that. So, Liverpool in fifth. In fourth, Manchester United. Manchester United in fourth, and I've put them in fourth because... The other three are just stronger. Now, some people are going to go, no, but Man United, they've, they've done really well in the transfer market. They've bolstered their team and whatnot. I don't think they've bolstered their team in the same way people actually think they've bolstered their team. I don't think them getting players like Hoyland, Mason Mount, um, and these guys, I don't look at them and go, whoa, they've elevated United to another level. No, I think United are still nearly in the same position that they were in last season. But they just look a little better on paper. That's it. But the substance, I don't think is there. I think they're basically pretty much similar to where they were. And that's why I've stuck them in fourth. Because for me, Man City, stronger than them. Arsenal, stronger than them. And, and no one's expecting this to happen. They're not, no, we've gone under the radar. People don't understand what's cooking. You'll see on Sunday. You'll see on Sunday. You will see on Sunday. You will see. And that's why respectfully and honestly I've put Chelsea third I've put Chelsea third I don't think we're up to the levels of City and even Arsenal at the moment and that's why I've put us in third I'd like to think that the surprise could be us the dark horse could be us and I think we could if we're serious we could put in a title challenge this season that's gonna sound crazy but we ain't got European football we've got a free schedule we've got a top manager now we've got a team of players that know what they're doing that know where the goal is and know how to play together and they're all still basically quite new and there's gonna be a lot of chemistry that's building throughout the entire season as we play one game a week that's an advantage that we have over everybody in that top six 
Everyone has European football, except us. And that's why in the league, we have the advantage. So that's why I'm placing us in third. In terms of levels, we're not quite there, as I said, in terms of City and Arsenal. I think, respectfully, you have to put us in third. But I do want to say, do not be surprised if Chelsea finish above third. Don't be surprised. You'll see on Sunday. <laughs> Second, or let's just reveal. Let's just reveal. I've gone Arsenal to win the league. And it pains me to say that, but I've gone Arsenal to win the league because Man City, they, and to be honest, Man City could still win the league. Let's be honest. But I think it'll be between them two. I think the team that has really bolstered themselves in the way they have, they've needed to, the ones that have really allocated the play that they've needed to, in order to take themselves to the next level has been Arsenal and not Man City. And I think that Man City, having done what they've done last season, won the treble, it's not about trying to do the treble again. It's about trying to maintain that level. It's so difficult to maintain that level. And Arsenal were close last season in terms of the league. Had it not been for their inexperience and naivety, player and coach, so both the team and the manager, I think Arsenal could have gone the way if they were just a little bit more smarter and a little bit more clinical and they dealt with the pressure in those moments where they let a couple of those results go in order to allow City to take the lead, they would have won the title. So that's where I think that's been rectified this season. And they've brought in players like Declan Rice and they've brought in players like Timber. And as much as I think he's not going to have much impact, but they have Kai Havertz and yeah, he's there. You know, he's there. I think the one thing that Arsenal do need is a striker. Gabriel Jesus and even Kai Havertz, you can't rely on them. Gabriel Jesus, you can in terms of the style of play and the link up and being able to allow others to, 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 to open up and um, get into goal scoring positions. Kai Havertz, you'd think would be that guy, but please, let me just tell you, do not expect too much from Kai Havertz. I'm just saying that I do not. Yes, he'll, he'll have some goals, he'll have some assists, but that's it. He's not going to be blockbuster that people are actually expecting. He'll just be one of the lads, that's it. So I do think in order for Arsenal to cement themselves, get a top striker, and I think they could go all the way. But as it stands right now, I don't see complacency kicking into Man City, but I just see the quality coming a little bit down. I think it's not a case of being figured out, but it's a case of you just can't maintain that level that they had last season, man. That was that was ridiculous. It's just not possible. So the gap is going to come closer, and if the gap comes closer, I think Arsenal as the team, as a collective, are going to be more stable and more efficient than what Man City are. That, but just, I think it's going to be them two quite close. I think Chelsea not too far behind and then the rest. But let's wait and see how it's going to happen. But this is my Premier League predictions. So let me know down below what yours are. Much appreciated. And um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out once the season kicks off. And when we get to May, we will revisit this and see how wrong I was. <laughs> <laughs> now, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below on everything that I've discussed, Kaiseido and, and, and all sorts. And just before we actually come off, let me just check if there has been any um, considerable update in relation to Kaiseido. And if there's been any updates and so far, no, there hasn't. So we will leave it at that. Um, and if anything does happen... Bild, I've just seen Kane um, has Tottenham's permission to travel to Munich for a medical. That's obviously going to happen, but that's as far as we've got in terms of this video. So there we are. Thank you all for watching. Do not forget, like I've always said, if you do want to make sure you know where to come, when to come um, for videos when they're uploaded, you have to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell to be notified once I've uploaded. On top of that, check out all my socials. So my personal socials, at Instagram underscore on uh, for, for my personal one on Instagram, um, at Eunice Talks. Um, on X Twitter at Eunice Talks underscore um, on TikTok at Eunice Talks Football Instagram at uh, Y Talks Football on TikTok or X or Twitter or X sorry and on TikTok at Eunice Talks Football there's a lot go into the description and follow <laughs> all the links they're all there but thank you all so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow for tomorrow you are getting um Actually, no, you'll get two videos, but it'll be one in a normal time and one a little earlier than you normally do. And that will be the preview for Chelsea versus... No, sorry, that's, that's Saturday. My head's all over the place. Kaiseido's done me in here. No, tomorrow you're getting a double upload, but the second video will be uploaded earlier than usual. Um, so just bear that in mind. Then Saturday you're getting a double upload as well. But the first video will come considerably late. And the second one will be much later, which is going to be the preview for Chelsea Liverpool. So make sure you guys are here for that. And I will see all of you then. Thank you so much for watching. See you tomorrow, people. Have a good one. Take care and peace.